Speaker, my question is for the Deputy Premier. Last week, I had the pleasure of meeting Andrea and Eric, the proud parents of five-year-old Henrik. Henrik is autistic and was nonverbal before he began IBI therapy. After three years of therapy, Henrik now attends kindergarten, has friends, makes eye contact, and calls his parents mom and dada. Consistency and repetition are fundamental for children with autism. But this government's changes to the autism program puts Henrik's growth in jeopardy. Access to consistent therapy is necessary for Henrik to build on his progress. Parents tell me this government's new program will steal their children's smiles, rob their words, and take away their friends. Under this government's plan, Henrik won't receive the 30 to 40 hours of therapy per week he has so greatly benefited from. Appropriate support is not false hope. Mr. Speaker, why is this government forcing parents like Andrea to do more with less? The Deputy Premier. Mr. Children, Community and Social Service. Thank you very much, uh, Speaker. I want to say thank you to the member opposite for being, bringing Hendrick's uh, story to the Legislative Assembly. He sounds like an amazing child, and I'm glad that you're an advocate for him. But let's be perfectly clear, and, and I hate to sound like a broken record, we have 23,000 children who are being denied support by their Ontario government today. When I assumed office six months ago, uh, the first issue I was briefed on was the long wait list in the autism program, as well as the fact that it was bankrupt. So I uh, understand uh, and I appreciate the passion from the member opposite, but I have an equal passion to ensure that every single child in Ontario that has autism has access to support from their Ontario government, and that is why we are going to clear the wait list. While we doubled uh, the investment into Diagnostic Response. Hub, while we've been sending more support to Northern Ontario, and why we are going to introduce and empower parents for choice for the services that they believe are best suited for their child. Supplementary, the member for London, Fanshawe. Thank you, Speaker. My question is to Deputy Premier. Maria Desse is a constituent of mine who has an eight-year-old son with autism. Maria has said that the government's plan will only support her son for two months. She is a seasonal worker with no health benefits. With services being so expensive, she is thinking of selling her home just to make sure her son still receives the therapy he deserves. She told me, my son cannot speak out against this. He is nonverbal. I need to be his voice. This is going to be terrible for our family and others. So Maria wants to know, why won't this government commit to providing services for children like Maria's son, the support they need and deserve? Minister. Uh, thanks very much uh, to the member from London Fanshawe for bringing her constituents' concerns uh, to the floor of this assembly. Uh, and I do appreciate uh, Maria uh, being an advocate for her child. And if I had this, held the same beliefs, I would probably be in the same boat. But my commitment is to ensure that every single child in the province of Ontario who has autism has access to service from their Ontario government. I don't understand why the NDP supported the previous Liberal plan that excluded th uh, three out of four children in the province of Ontario with autism. I also don't understand why they don't stand up Order. and defend those 23,000 children who are on an endless wait list with no end in sight. Speaker, we are standing on this side of the House and part of that side of the House to ensure that every child has a fighting chance and that their parents have the support they need to provide their child with 